Hey YouTube, it's Empirant. With the last update that came out on May 3rd, we got an interesting buff to the Malay. Actually, they got two buffs, but the one I'm looking at here involves their elephants. Sorry, Karambits. The update made it so that Malay elephants now cost 40% less in Imperial Age, while remaining 30% less in Castle Age. On the surface, this sounds amazing, as the 30% decrease in cost already made them cost two less resources than knights, and 40% makes them cost 21 resources fewer. However, before we get too excited, we need to remember the downsides of Malay's stable. No bloodlines means 20 less hit points for our elephants, and only the first armor upgrade also means that we will be missing two melee armor and three pierce armor compared to an elephant save with full blacksmith attacks. So just because the Malay elephant is cheaper than the Burmese Khmer or Vietnamese elephants, does that make them better, or is their lack of upgrades just too much of a defect? Let's find out. For starters, let's compare our Malay elephant to just a generic elephant with full Castle Age upgrades. As we would expect, the generic elephant wins this fight, and the elite versions with Imperial upgrades have the same result. However, this isn't really a fair fight for our Malay elephant, since its whole point is its cheap cost. If we take cost effectiveness into account, the Malay elephant easily wins, since we can get 7 Malay battle elephants out against our 5 generic elephants. The Malay's elephants win this fight with 42% of their health left. Of course though, there isn't really such a thing as a generic elephant in Age of Empires 2, since every Civ that gets battle elephants has either a unique tech or a Civ bonus that affects their elephants. The Khmer get plus 3 attack on their elephants with tusk swords, the Burmese get plus 1 melee and plus 1 pierce armor with howdah, and Vietnamese get 50 extra hit points on their elephants with chatras. Knowing this, how do our Malay elephants compare when we stack them up? Well honestly, still pretty well. Since we can get 7 battle elephants out to each opponent's 5, the Malay elephants are still able to win pretty handedly. They beat Khmer elephants with about 26% of their health left, Burmese elephants with about 32% of their health left, and Vietnamese elephants with about 30%. This advantage only gets bigger in the Imperial Age now, with Malay being able to get 8 of their elite battle elephants out against just 5 of the other Sims. Here, the Malay win these fights with 41% of their health left against the Khmer, about 43% of their health left against Burmese, and 57% of their health left against Vietnamese. The reason they did so well against Vietnamese elephants is because, unlike the other civs, Vietnamese missed the final attack upgrade from the blacksmith, meaning they are doing two less damage per attack. Okay, so we know that Malay elephants have a pretty significant advantage over other civilizations' battle elephants, but what about against some other common units they'll run into? Well, against the Nightline, they trade incredibly well. In Castle Age, Malay elephants cost almost exactly the same as knights, and win one-on-one -on -one with about 50% of their health left. Incredibly, Castle Age Malay elephants are also able to beat Cavalier, and trade almost exactly evenly with Paladins. Once we give our Malay elephant the elite upgrade, it beats fully upgraded Cavalier one-on-one -on -one with about 49% of its health left, and it beats a fully upgraded Paladin with about 31% of the elephant's health left. What's even more impressive is that in Imperial Age, a Malay elephant actually costs about 16% less than a Paladin, thanks to Malay's new 40% cost reduction in Imperial Age. A scaled up resource balanced fight of 5 Malay elephants against 5 fully upgraded Castle Age knights has the elephants winning with as much as 58% of their health left. Meanwhile, a resource balanced fight between our Khmer battle elephants and knights means that it takes 7 knights to balance the resources out with 5 elephants. This numbers advantage does help the knights and brings the fight a bit closer, but the elephants still win with 41% of their health left. In Imperial Age, the Malay player is able to get out 6 elite battle elephants for 684 resources to take on 5 fully upgraded cavalier or 5 fully upgraded paladin, each costing 675 resources to produce, beating the cavalier with around 76% of their health left and the paladin with 61%. We can compare this to Khmer Elite Battle Elephants, since they performed the best against our Malay Elephants. 5 Khmer Elite Battle Elephants, worth 950 resources, win against 7 Cavalier costing 945 resources, with 54% of their health left, and against Paladin with around 30%. While Elephants in general are a pretty strong counter to the Nightline, at least as long as you can force an engagement, you can see that the numbers advantage afforded to Malay by their unit discount makes them the clear winner here. 
All right, so far everything is looking pretty good for the Malay elephants, but how do they do against typical counters to elephants? Is it possible that the number advantage given to them by their Civ bonus is enough to overcome the bonus damage they receive from units like Halves or Camels? Well, not quite. Seven Malay Battle Elephants costing 931 resources against 15 Castle Age upgraded pikemen costing 900 resources shows that the Malay Elephants still lose this battle, with the pikemen keeping around 44% of their health. This is still better than 5 Khmer Battle Elephants costing 950 resources, which lose to the pikemen as well, but this time with the pikemen having 65% of their health left. In Imperial Age, Malay can actually get out 8 Elite Battle Elephants for 912 resources against 15 Halbs. This fight results in the Halbs winning, but by a much smaller margin, with only around 25% of their health left. Meanwhile, the 5 Khmer Elite Battle Elephants lose this fight also, but leave the 15 Halbs much better off, with 61% of their health left. So Malay Elephants do better against the Pikemen line than other Elephants, but I still would never recommend making Elephants if your opponent has a large Pikemen or Halb mass. What about Camels though, which are generally considered a much softer counter to Cavalry than the Pikemen line? Well, in the Castle Age, fully upgraded Camels definitely do not counter Malay Elephants, losing in a resource balanced fight of 9 Malay Elephants costing 1,197 resources against 10 Camel Riders costing 1,150 resources, with the Malay Elephants keeping 47% of their health. But do Camels even actually counter regular Elephants? Turns out the answer to that is no, especially if you have gotten the unique tax for the other Battle Elephants. Our Khmer Elephants also win a resource balanced fight of 6 Elephants costing 1,140 resources against 10 Camel Riders costing 1,150 resources. Although they do do considerably worse than our Malay Elephants, only retaining 27% of their health. Alright, but what about Imperial Age and Heavy Camel Riders? It is important to note that Heavy Camel Riders get double the bonus damage of regular Camel Riders, going from 9 bonus damage against Cavalry to 18. So how does this translate to our tests? Well, in Imperial Age, we're now able to get out a full 10 Malay Elite Battle Elephants, for 1,140 resources to take on the 10 Heavy Camel Riders for 1,150 resources. This means that our Malay Elephants are able to win over the Heavy Camels, keeping around 35% of their health left. Meanwhile, our Khmer 6 Elite Battle Elephants actually do get countered by Heavy Camels, with the Camels winning with 29% of their health left. The last matchup that I'm going to dive into the numbers on is against the Swordsman line. In Castle Age, a resource balanced fight of 10 Castle Age fully upgraded long swordsmen costing 800 resources against 6 Malay elephants costing 798 resources has the Malay elephants winning with 73% of their health left. In a similar fight, 10 long swordsmen against 4 Khmer elephants costing 760 resources results in the elephants winning with 70% of their health left pretty close to the same as our Malay Elephants. In Imperial Age, we can now get 7 Malay Elite Elephants out, costing 798 resources, against 10 Champions costing 800 resources. In this fight, our Elephants win with about 67% of their health left. Our 4 Khmer Elite Battle Elephants, on the other hand, won against the 10 Champions with around 43% of their health left. I think the best takeaway here is that if your opponent is making Elephants, you are much better off using your barracks to produce pikemen instead of trying to go swordsmen. There are a couple of other matchups that I do want to mention, but that are hard to measure exactly in tests like these. The first one of these matchups is against the archer line. Technically, if you had a map that was infinitely large, archers should always be able to micro down elephants, since the archer's base speed is very slightly ahead of battle elephants, even with husbandry research to speed up your elephants. However, Maps aren't infinitely large, and ultimately, any engagement between elephants and archers is going to depend heavily on the terrain, buildings, elevation, and more to determine the exact winner. With that said, I do think there is a niche use for battle elephants against archers that we can look at some numbers on, and see how Malay elephants do compared to other civilizations' elephants, and that role is that of arrow sponge. In Castle Age, a fully upgraded Malay Battle Elephant has 250 health and 2 Pierce Armor, compared to other Civ's elephants having 270 health and 3 Pierce Armor. 
This means that a melee battle elephant can take 50 crossbow shots from crossbowmen that have bodkin arrow, compared to 68 from other Civs elephants. In Imperial Age, a fully upgraded melee elite battle elephant has 300 health and 4 pierce armor, while other Civs elephants get 320 health and 7 pierce armor. This means that the melee elite elephants can take 50 fully upgraded arbalist shots before going down, compared to 107 shots for other civilizations elephants. What this means is that melee elephants actually do perform worse as arrow sponges, even if they get more elephants out than other civs. For example, in Castle Age, 10 Khmer elephants would be able to soak up 680 crossbow shots, whereas the equivalent 13 melee elephants would only be able to soak up 650 crossbow shots. In Imperial Age, 10 Khmer Elite Battle Elephants would be able to soak up 1,070 Arbalist shots, as opposed to an equivalent 14 Malay Elite Battle Elephants only being able to take 700 shots. Of course, that's not to say that Malay Battle Elephants can't still make for a good meat shield in front of your crossbowmen or arbs, but they definitely fall behind the other civilization's elephants in this regard, even with their cheaper cost. Especially when you consider that the Burmese's Howd Attack and the Vietnamese Chatras will both end up giving their elephants even higher numbers of shots that they can take than the Khmer elephants we compared Malay to here. Lastly, we have one more counter to look at, and that's monks. Monks are an incredibly strong counter to elephants since they are almost guaranteed a conversion before the slow elephants can reach them. The high cost of most elephants also means that this conversion is a much bigger resource loss for the side losing the elephant, and a bigger gain for the side that converted it. However, there is a strong argument to be made that Malay elephants are not countered as strongly by monks, since you can get more elephants out, it's not as big of a resource loss if you lose one, and it's not as big of a gain for the other side when they gain your elephants. For example, if we take 6 Khmer elephants costing 1140 resources against 3 monks, we'll see that ultimately the side with the 3 monks will win, since the monks each get a conversion and can give at least some healing to their then converted 3 elephants. However, if we are Malay, we can now get 8 elephants out, costing only 1064 resources. In this same battle, the monks now only convert 3 elephants, leaving us 5 elephants to take out the monks and the 3 converted elephants. I still wouldn't recommend throwing your elephants away to a large group of monks as Malay, but the issue of monks is at least slightly mitigated by the Malay elephant's cheaper cost. Additionally, since the limiting factor on monks is usually the player's ability to micro, Malay elephants be can become more and more viable against monks as the size of the army grows. Finally, Malay are the only elephant civ to get the tech heresy, which makes converted units simply die instead of changing sides. While this tech is very expensive at 1000 gold, it may be worth it if your opponent is making a lot of monks to counter your army of elephants. So I know there were a lot of numbers thrown around in this video, so let me try to give it a quick summary here. Malay elephants, while the worst elephants individually, are easily more cost effective in most situations compared to the other civilization's elephants. They win handedly against knights, swordsmen, and even regular and heavy camels, the latter of which other civilization's elephants lose to. In fact, the only situation in which Malay elephants aren't better from a resource efficiency standpoint to other elephants is when they're being used to soak up arrow fire. That is by no means to say that a Malay player should always make elephants. All of the tests we looked at here removed one important factor from the fights, and that is the elephant's slow movement speed. In order to effectively go for elephants with any Civ, including Malay, I would highly recommend that you were the aggressor in your game. Being the aggressor makes it much easier to force your opponent to take fights they wouldn't otherwise want to, since their only options are often either A, take the fight, or B, lose buildings, vills, or accrue idle time. This however is not the case if you're defending, at which point the opponent can often just micro around your elephants to cause havoc in your base, or simply pull their army back and wait until they have a more favorable army composition, a stronger numbers advantage, or both. That's all for me today though. Thanks to all of you who just watched this video as well as my past videos. It is great to see the subscriber count slowly crawl up towards the 300 mark, and I really appreciate all of the support that you've been showing me down in the comments. I know this video took a little while to come out, there were a lot of tests to run for this one, but I am hoping the next video doesn't have quite as long of a gap before it's out. Thanks again for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.